And we are back to talk about this uh, interesting article from Insider.com, I think it is. And uh, apparently George had some uh, some interesting things for Ryan Condal and uh, 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 Spavovich, Spokovich. Um, Ra- random hills for George to die on. Uh, I-, I love the term "be in his bonnet" because it really, it really does. It really does seem like that's like a like a thing with him in this whole article. But um, uh, House of the Dragon co-showrunners Miguel uh, Spavchik and Ryan Condal said that there were three things Marston- Martin asked to have included in House of mm. the Dragon: uh, colorful dragons, an emphasis on bright heraldry. And in addition, mm. the addition of King Jaehaerys the Second. Now, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> which you want to? Which you want to start with first? Uh, let's start with Let's start with the easy ones. We'll, we'll do Jaehaerys last because because what a, what a fucking weird statement, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, there's a story to all of these sorts of things. But yeah, let's talk about the colorful dragons. So I kind of understand this one. Um, obviously, we only have three dragons in, in Game of Thrones and HBO Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, Drogon, mm-hmm. Rhaegal, and oh, I'm going to butcher the... I always butcher the third one. Uh, Viserion. Viserion? There yeah. it is. What did I used to say? Viseron? Viseron. Vis- oh. vi- Viser- you know, like... It, I'm so sorry. It's, it's really... It's a, it's a tough one. If, if Like somebody said, if you're not... And again, pronunciation is completely relative. Don't care. Do not care. Um, pronounce it as you like. But the... Uh, I first read the book and I, you know, I said, oh, his name is Viserys, you know, or, or Viserys or something like that's just um, to to suddenly put the emphasis on, you know, the the second co- syllable, you know, to make it Viserys uh, was not something that I did. You're, you're very so, kind. You're very, you're very, yeah. you're very kind. I feel like when the show came out, all the names like were put to bed. Like, this is how you say it. That's it. Never again. Yeah. But um, no, so that I understand. So, <clears throat> you always correct me on Varys, you know, or, or something. And, Varys and set makes more sense. I just, I, I don't guess. I just, I don't know why. And Even George is wrong. Show, it's not Dothraki, it's Dothraki. He's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, George. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know if the show necessarily put everything to bed. But like I say, uh, but uh, I think with a lot of things. Yeah, so. Anyway, but the dragons, like sick. I understand, like you know, uh, all of the the three dragons are basically the same thing, copy paste, except with different shades. Like yeah. I kind of get yeah, it, yeah. and there's more to the dragons than that. They're a bit more colorful, kinda. I think, uh, yeah, and cer- certainly in the books, there's a lot of time spent talking about, you know, the the, the cream and gold colors to to Viserion versus like the green color to to Rhaegal and stuff like that. Um, you know, and and. Even even um, a little bit with 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 Drogon, you know, with his like crimson spine and things like that. But yeah, he wanted them to be different colors um, to just give give more uh, you know colorful background to everything going on, rather than everything just being drab, looking the same. I think I am going to enjoy the approach that House of the Dragon takes with the with with the dragons because even in the trailer we had we saw one that has like a, a very long neck and a very long tail mm. and one I think uh there's a new poster with Rhaenyra coming around with her where I think that might be her dragon where it looks like a velociraptor kind of more lizard like mm. uh versus the other ones Yeah we get a bit, ones. we get a, a I think with Caraxes Damon's dragon because they call it the blood worm um, it's described only as like lean in in the uh, in in fire and blood, but the fact that they call it a blood worm, which is a armless and wingless dragon, I think people want. I think maybe the designers wanted it to be even more like a worm with really long neck and really lean and things like that. Mm-hmm. But um, that'd be my guess on why like Caraxes Caraxes looks significantly different from the others. Well, and the whole colorful dragons thing, I'm just I'm just taking that as as George wanting uh, the dragons to look like dragons, but also distinct from mm-hmm. each other instead of just copy paste. It's just it's because that's yeah. what Daenerys' dragons were. They were all Drogon with just different colors, right? And but though there is an unfortunate thing that that the dragons that exist at least early in the Dance of the Dragons do tend to all look the same. They're either yellow gold or they're red. <laughs> so so Melis and Caraxes are both red, and then Vagar and Cyrax are both are both gold. 
Um, and so you, it, there are, there is sea smoke, which is kind of an ashy gray. Um, and I'm trying to remember who else, but uh, they're, 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 they're not exactly that different. Now there's some blue ones that come in later. Dreamfire is b- blue. And I think Tessarian is blue. Um, we'll see how those look on screen. These uh, to have blue dragons. Was it, um, was but it, it's not was like, it cannibal or was it sheep stealer that were like well, black, blackish? Can, cannibal is, I think cannibal's gray. I, I have to look that up or white or something. Um, I don't think we'll see cannibal and, until season two. Yeah. And, and uh, sheep stealer is, is um, they call him cannibals. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm completely wrong. You you were right. Uh, cannibal is black as coal. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, maybe it, maybe I didn't know that because it was it, they they it, it was revealed in Fire and Blood. Um, Sheep Stealer is mud brown, so uh, nothing too interesting. What? But uh, yeah, but of course you know they're they're not they're not that vivid, but they're they're kind of like realistically they they wanted to be a little more realistic and gritty you mm-hmm. know, rather than being super colorful. So, so George was anal about that. Um, the other thing George was... Under, understandable. Understandable. George, George has more of a fetish for the dragons than anybody else. Like, it's not like anybody else really cares about them that much. <laughs> you know, they're CGI beasts. Like, th- this is modern America and, like, no one cares about CGI anymore. Yeah, you know, you're, so. you're actually... <laughs> yes, you're... Yeah. I was watching Prey, um, the, uh, oh. the new Predator film, and, like, some of is it, it... Is it good? I liked it. I thought it was it was pretty good. Yeah. It's better than the last Predator film. Um, but at one it's not point, hard. that's I mean, <laughs> that's not really hard at all. I personally think uh, you know the Grifters. I mean, aside, Game of Thrones season eight is probably better than the last Predator film. <laughs> <laughs> the Grifters aside, I think it's probably the best one since the original with Arnold. But um, okay, a lot of people liked the a lot of people liked Predators, but I don't know. Predators is a little was eh, that's that was okay. I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. But uh, no, I, it had like the CGI blood, which I really fucking hate the CGI blood. And, I, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and go, watching this and then going back to the original Predator, I love like the special effects with the, you know, the cornstarch blood that they have there. Like, like, yeah, you're right about the CGI. I'm kind of just, you know, over it at this point. Right. Like since, I mean, since say the original Jurassic Park or the Phantom Menace trailer, I can't think of a time where people, well, I guess when, when uh, Avatar came out. Where people said, "Ooh, that's some great CGI." Like people just don't fucking care anymore. Yeah. Like now, you know, they've created everything. It looks realistic, and you know, now it's like we like it better when when someone says, "Yeah, that looks real because it was practical," and everybody goes, "Really?" You know, mm-hmm. like that's that's what people are into. No one cares about a CGI dragon. If, like, if it's anything, the least interesting part. We should use CGI in subtle means, like when when Samuel L. Jackson looks twenty years younger in the Captain Marvel film. That's a yeah. Good when use it adds for it. utility, or some people said, you know, I, I think the industry is learning that combining CGI with practical effects uh, to create kind of a seamless environment um, is is the way to go. Like mm-hmm. when everybody watched Mad Max Fury Road, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's all practical." Well, that's not quite true. Like you know, the cars were all practical, but there were actually some mountains and stuff that they put around that were CGI, but. You know, but because like static rocks, we can do perfectly like no one noticed and no one cared. Right. You know, so. Um, yeah, yeah. George, George keeps bringing up the dragons and, and, and he's done this for years where he's like, well, you know, I, I put the dragons in 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 my series because their dragons are cool and everybody loves dragons. <laughs> and, and, and I went in and I and I and they, I, I, they pitched the long night and I was like, I don't understand. It doesn't have dragons. And when I pitched. I pitched uh, uh, the, the the dance of the dragons, and there's there's seventeen there's seventeen dragons. Like everybody should care about dragons. Like, like get it through your head, George. Like people don't really fucking care. <laughs> like the, I'm like so dragons. glad you brought up the long night because this has happened since we uh you, you you so you brought this up actually when we were discussing the article and the trailer. You brought this up like weeks ago. Um, where you said yeah. HBO is in a weird position. And since you've brought this up, H, uh, not HBO, I'm sorry. No, you said HBO, but Warner owns them. Since you brought oh, this yeah, up, yeah. Warner has canceled $90 million worth of Batgirl. 
So yeah, that's weird. That is so weird. So the, the really reason I'm bringing this up is because you brought up Blood Moon, which, once again, HBO, that was a $30 million investment that they just threw in the trash. Yeah. So, and but you're right. And I, I thought you said, because uh, you, you, you took this from one of the lines where, isn't there like a myth about a, a knight who encounters a dragon in Westeros and tries to fool it with, with the mirrored shield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, sir, 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 uh, uh, shit, the Serwin of the Mirror Shield, I think. Something like that. And you took that as there being dragons in Westeros eons ago. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the, uh, it's the Jonquil and Florian, uh, story about dragons being in Westeros eons ago. Mm. Um, uh, but the Mirror, the Mirror Shield thing is Serwin, but, uh, Serwin of the Mirror Shield happens. Um, wait, does that happen also? You know what? You are right. Serwin is also back then. So we've got we've actually got two tales. Um we actually have two tales of of dragons being existing in in, in olden times. Mm-hmm. So technically maybe George was mistaken like there's there are some dragons back back then during the long night yeah, era. Yeah, way 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 back. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But there, so there's yeah there's two ancient stories that have dragons in them and that's Sir One of the Mirror Shield and Jonquil and Florian. So unless unless those stories are bullshit planted by the Jaehaerys psyops to get sure to yeah. get get everybody like acclimated with the Targaryens. Completely possible. <laughs> who, who, I mean, who, who knows what happened in the in the Age of Heroes? Like those, they might have not been dragons. They might have been, you know. Uh, helicopters you know like you you know you you have no idea what's going on in the age of heroes so could have been anything but uh no so yes george he loves his dragons um so that's the one thing he wanted like ryan condal and uh miguel uh kakovich whatever his name is that's that's the one Mm. thing he told those guys to make sure that's in there the second thing um i was a little confused about uh he says bright heraldry I think he just means that he wants their banners and everything to be really clear. The the you know the flags and banners and and on the the heraldry on their on their doublets and their shields. I think he wanted it to be just really clear to create kind of a vibrant environment. I, I think that's what he was looking for. I agree with you, except I don't have an issue with how Game of Thrones did it because uh, I was talking to a couple of people earlier actually about how the uh, Targaryen. I don't. I, I hate the Targaryen guard helmets. Um, yeah. They kind of look like House Bolton's helmets. And mm. uh, I don't know if you remember what that looks like. I can send it to you real quick. But House Bolton has the Bolton sigil on their helmets. And yes, it's not vibrant, but I feel like if it was vibrant, it'd be a little silly, maybe? Yeah, though I do think that you are a little different than most viewers. Like, like when I watch the show, like I noticed... You know, there, maybe it's in the back of my mind the subtle differences. But when 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 a battle happens, often I'm like, eh, it's a bunch of freaking armor crashing into each other. But you'll say, oh my gosh, no, that's clearly the Lannister armor, and that's clearly like the you know the 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 North armor, and that's clearly the Baratheon armor. Like you can tell the difference, mm-hmm. um, and you look for that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know, they just kind of all look like silver and drab and brown and gray and whatever, like crashing into each other. Um, and because all the colors are muted, they kind of all look the same too. Like you know what? Um, That's a very good point because uh, someone was showing me a, a side by side between the gold cloaks from Game of Thrones and gold cloaks from House of the Dragon, and the gold cloaks literally have gold like like you know little cloaks on yeah. their left arm. And uh, same with the Kingsguard. The Kingsguard, I hated Robert's Kingsguard, but the Kingsguard here look fucking badass. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this with um, when we did our rewatch of of uh, Game of Thrones, you know, episodes one and two. Out just now how on the Patreon, Kingsguard, by the way. Out now on Patreon. Yeah, the, 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 how the Kingsguard is just like it. They're like the white cloaks don't look white. They look like these drab, dirty, gray things. Mm-hmm. And you're like, but they're supposed to be like sparkling white and pure and clean, you know, to like be a metaphor. And then their personalities are the exact opposite because, like, you know, they're anything but these, like, pure things, you know. But instead they walk in with, like, these dirty, gritty, like, white cloaks, which <clears throat> which is more realistic. I'll grant it's much more realistic. This is medieval times. Like, people aren't keeping stuff clean with bleach and 
whatever. But exactly, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, right. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I get it. Like, uh, so, but um, you know that 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 metaphor is lost. So I, I I can understand. I can understand wanting the the colorful, vibrant look to you know to what this is. It, it's it's George upset that Renly's uh, Kingsguard weren't colorful colorful rainbows. That's what it is. It is. I, it I'm is. sure that's part of it. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's part of it. I'm sure he was annoyed that the that the that the the King's Guard was not white enough and the Renly didn't have colorful color guard. And that, you know, like he spends a lot of times when, you know, time when he talks about, you know, uh, attorneys and, and people meeting in great in, at banquets and all of this heraldry, he fucking loves it. It's like, you know, so I'm sure he's also annoyed that there's not a, there's not enough time spent like zooming in on the food. <laughs> <laughs> This is something a buddy of mine who, you know, he loves to like to make he, this, this is why me and him are friends. We love to like, you know, talk about food and stuff. And he's like, doesn't that bother you that like, you know, the show really didn't focus on like all the food that's in the books? I'm like, yeah, kind of. And, you know, and, and you know, I'm sure there are people out there who are like musicians who get upset yeah. when there aren't like enough emphasis on some of the songs in Westeros. And, you know, I'm sure there are uh, paleontologists who would love to go like Trey who would love to go more to detail about the stuff on the show. Yeah. So it's always a shame, but I agree with you. I, it's funny. I read an article once talking about the difference between reading <clears throat> um, a Game of Thrones and other fantasy novels. And what when you read other fantasy novels, you want to live in that world. Like you want to be around magical elves and you want to be using, you know, the, the spells. You want to be hanging out with hobbits and like being in those little hobbit holes and you know it they're 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 wondrous worlds that you wish you were part of Mm. um and they're like at no point in a song of ice and fire do you wish you lived in that world and then they said okay with the exception of (laughs) when they're when they're at a banquet (laughs) like like, 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 like the only aspect the only redeemable quality to Platitos is their food. Like it's the only thing that's redeemable, you know, or may, or maybe their brothels. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <clears throat> and uh, now the third one. I need to listen to this real quick because the third one is actually a quote from the show. Hmm. Um. Let me see if I can. Uh... Uh, let me see if I can find the quote. I think this is the quote straight from the show, which is, uh, blah, 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 blah. So the third part is, um, George, the third thing George is anal about, the first one being Call for Dragons, second being Bright Heldry. The third one, he, he wanted the showrunners to, to make sure they put in House of the Dragon for whatever reason. Um, the mentioning of Jaehaerys the second, which is yes. almost two hundred years after this House of the Dragon. So mm. apparently, for some reason, he had a bee in his bonnet about this. Actual quote from the article, and um, I think it has to do with what Maester Aemon says to John when he reveals his identity. So Maester Aemon yeah. says, uh, "My father was Maker, first of his name. My brother Aegon reigned after him when I had refused the throne." And he was followed by his son, Eris, whom they called the Mad King. Wrong. Yeah. There is actually another Targaryen king, Aegon V's son, Jaehaerys II, who was the father yes. of the Mad King. Um, apparently this annoyed George, but I don't know how they're going to correct this. <sighs> yeah, I don't know how they're correcting it unless they say, like, this many kings, this many generations later, something will happen. Um like, so getting getting to Jaehaerys the second, like I can completely, utterly understand why D and D eliminated Jaehaerys the second as a king. Um, one, he's incredibly unimportant narratively. He he, um, and I'll bring up like the couple points that are important narratively. But he reigns for like three years. He's a nobody. Um, he's rarely mentioned in the text. Also, if you're going to age up all of the characters, it makes Eamon way too old to be like, I know Eamon's ancient, but like, you know, we're aging up all of the characters. And so it's really difficult to have another generation of, of 
of of, care, of people in there. But so, and they're just like, well, this is confusing. Oh, this is somebody's, you know, <clears throat> great, great uncle mm. or, or great uncle. Daenerys is, Aemon is Daenerys, Aemon is Daenerys is, let me think. Um, great, yeah, I guess great, great uncle, right? Yes, I think that would be right. Yeah. Right. It's it's all like when you get to like double greats and stuff, like people are just like they, they zone out. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a lot easier to be like, oh, it's it's her grandfather's brother, you know, like her, her great uncle. Like <clears throat> that's a lot easier in a, in a, in a connection sense. Um, I get it. I, I, I very much get it. Now, what is lost when you lose Jaehaerys the <laughs> second? Not much. Like, I get that, okay, there might be a bloodline thing. Like, if you, if you buy into my Dragon X gene and things like that kind of stuff, you, you can't, you know, you need to have an additional generation in order to make, in order to give um, Daenerys' father a, a special gene and all of these sorts of things. Like, if you're going that, uh, but I don't know if George would have really had a, like really cared that much about that little aspect of things. Maybe, maybe he was thinking about bloodline and you definitely needed that generation in there um, in order to get the bloodline and right for hatching dragons. Um, the other thing is it might have to do with the history of summer, summer hall and who, who is able to be at summer hall and things like that. Like having, Having Aegon the Unlikely, like Aerys's grandfather, die at Summerhall is a distant kind of connection. But having his his father die at Summerhall is going to be, is going to change him quite a bit. Like, why would Aerys be obsessed with fire when his father died in a fiery like um, uh, event? You know, and why wouldn't Aerys be at that event if um, and how you know? All these sorts of like little things like that. Um, Ray, you know, when because Rhaegar is born at that event, and uh, you, you'd think if Ares were running out of Summerhall due to the fire, he wouldn't be so obsessed with wildfire. I don't know that you could you could maybe make some sort of link like that, um, or maybe it has something to do with the war the the war of the nine penny kings. Like Jaehaerys the second fights the war of the nine penny kings. But if you have to hand that over to, to if you have to have that over to to Ares, we're, we're kind of changing his dynamic of how he handled war and how he was blindsided by Robert's rebellion. So I don't know. Those those are my guesses that maybe it had it either has something to do with bloodline, it has something to do with Summer Hall and who's there, or it has something to do with the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Um, but how the hell are they going to include Jaehaerys, the second Jaehaerys? How the hell are they going to include, include that? I mean, maybe somebody's going to have a vision of Summerhall. Like there'll be mm. a, a prophetic dream of Summerhall. That's possible. Or they, they, they seem, some, something in the future. They seem to, if, if, if the leaks are believed, they seem to be like hinting towards uh, a strong, in the first episode, a strong connection to the... Uh, to Game of Thrones with the White Walkers, yeah. so it seems like prophecy is coming back. I mean, in the trailer, uh, uh, you know, King Viserys has the dragon dreams. So yeah, yeah, I... he's got the dra- yeah. Whoever's sending him, <laughs> 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 who who's the three eyed crow right now? That's the question. Is it the? You know, we have no idea. We have no idea who the, who the three eyed crow is. I mean, does point. someone have to send him the dreams? Can't he just have them? <sighs> I mean it. If this were regular fantasy, yes. <laughs> but this is George R. Martin. Somebody's got to be sending those dreams. I think they're going to leave that Chil- out. I think they're going to just... Children of the... F- the Children of the Forest, a, a previous Three-Eyed Crow. You know, mm-hmm. somebody. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, well, they, they have so much of a Stark plot because they're... I guess we haven't, we haven't really seen... I guess we really wondered if there was going to be a lot more Stark stuff included like b plot wise mm. but none of the previews have shown any stark stuff so so since we've um, uh since we've last covered the trailer there's been a couple like more tv spots that have come out mm-hmm. and uh one of them shows uh, uh 
the Strong Boys, Rhaenyra, uh, Lainor, and Baby Joffrey, which I wonder if yeah. they're going to change Baby Joffrey's name to something else because jo- the name Joffrey is now culturally synonymous with like douchiness. Right. So I wonder if they're going to, because uh, like there's no way, like I, I don't want to insult the intelligence of the casual viewer, but they're going to think that's Joffrey. Maybe <laughs> like obviously multiple people can have I mean, the same Are names. they going to think that Viserys is Viserys, you know? I don't know. Uh, I, do, do casual fans remember Danny's brother? The fact that she had a brother? That's, I mean, I will admit that Joffrey is a lot more salient than, than Viserys for the casual. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, I think that, I mean, I think they'll keep it, keep his name Joffrey. Didn't we have that whole thing with Ryan Condal being like, I can't change the names. I'm not allowed to change the names of the dragons. <laughs> Wait. Wait, remind me. Did he, did he actually say I'm not I'm not allowed to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like like uh, like people like the the cast members are having trouble like remembering the dragon names. Right. And they're like can we just change these to things that are a little more like rather than just a bunch of random sounds like Caraxes and Meles and Cyrax and Tessarian and you know, can we change the names? Verma, you know, Vermithor or whatever. Uh yeah, you know, it's like and he's like no. <laughs> No, we can't do it. We can't. We can't. We just no. We can't do it. He he knows there'd be fan backlash. To be fair to Matt Smith, yeah. who bitched about it, I'm assuming it was him. He only has yeah, to remember yeah. like three dragon names. He only has to remember uh, Vagar. He has to remember his yeah. own dragon's name and maybe Rhaenyra's dragon, and that's kind of it. That's, that's the. Th- I mean, that's generally the thing about like certainly this season. Um, there's not that many dragons to pay attention to. Yes, once the dance of the dragons gets going. And you start throwing in the bastards and they start like, you know, adding more dragons later. Like most of them, most of them don't do shit. Okay. Most of them don't do (laughs) shit until, until like well into the dance, they, these dragons suddenly appear and are suddenly killed like within a paragraph of each other, you know, like you're like, wait, this dragon existed. Preston, stop it. You You know, know, he know he's going to fill out season two with like more battles. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you're right. There, there, there's, there's going to be a bunch of invented battles, mm-hmm. but for 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 the most part, at this point in our story, you got Melis, and Melis isn't even doing anything. Okay, Melis is just chilling, so we don't even need to care about Melis. We got Caraxes, and we got Cyrax, and we got Sea Smoke, and we got Vagar. Yeah. So a good chunk of them don't know, do nothing, with the exception of Vagar, and uh, I forgot, I forgot uh, Luke's uh, dragon's name. But uh, until then, until uh, unless. They, they all rhyme like Urax. Um, uh, I swear these are Mortal Kombat names. I, I yeah, exactly. <laughs> I swear they yeah, these are. Um, no, not now. Urax is the one from the, from 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 the Mirror Shield. That's what I was on my on my head mm. on my mind. But yeah, like it, until like that's the thing about Luke's dragon, right? Like Luke's dragon like exists. And then doesn't exist. Arax is his name, and not Urax, but Arax. Like Arax, like enters the story and is and exits the story at the same fucking time. Okay, like we don't need to. We don't even need to know about, you know, because they need us Luke. to care about Luke. We're probably going to get more time with him and his dragon. You're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Because also Luke himself pretty much enters the story and exits the story at one, like at once, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like oh right you know, Rhaenyra has a bunch of kids and oh one of them was named Luke and then he died you know so it's <laughs> and he had a dragon named Arax and it died. By the way, speaking of Matt Smith, he was actually complaining recently that uh, there's way too many sex scenes, way way too many sex scenes. Ah, uh, he's be- he's being funny, right? He's just trying to make a headline. I you think so? Because I I took that yeah. as legit. Like he's actually complaining that there's a lot of sex scenes. Uh, um, which is funny because all of the botchery, like, uh, for example, Aegon, um, Aegon, Allison's son, Aegon, yeah. when they af- alert him of his father's death, isn't he taking a bath in the streets of Flea Bottom while like young children are bathing him and also fighting for his pleasure? Um, wait, wait, say that again. I, I almost don't want to. I feel like he. 
<laughs> I almost don't want to. <laughs> so the reason I was distracted is I was looking up <clears throat> Matt Smith and and his life and man for for such a funny looking guy he <laughs> dates only supermodels I mean. he dates only supermodels oh my god I, I you it's funny you 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 call him funny looking i don't think he's that bad looking i don't know maybe i mean no i'm in real life he's a regular dude i'm sorry okay <laughs> he's a regular dude for real life for <clears throat> for um for being an actor he's funny looking <laughs> I mean, look at Pete Davidson. In, in the same lifetime, Pete Davidson dated right, Ariana right. Grande and Kim Kardashian. Okay, okay. So Matt Smith is currently dating. So you know the 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 female lead from Baby Driver, or the no, she's not even a lead, but the 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 love interest from Baby Driver. What's her name? Was also in. She was, her name is Lily James. She's from Baby Driver and um, that that Beatles movie where where the guy travels universes. Oh, yesterday. She's, she's pretty. Right, so that's Matt. So she used to date Chris Evans, and now she's dating Matt Smith. Damn, what a downgrade! What a downgrade! <laughs> oh, now you're like, well, wait a minute. Hey, Chris Evans is a good-looking guy. What are you out of your mind? I'm not saying Matt Smith is ugly. I'm just saying Chris Evans. I mean, that, come on, that's America's ass right there. What do you mean? Right. I, 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 yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, she played Pamela Anderson in the miniseries Pam and Tommy for Hulu? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what? yeah. What? Now I have yeah. to download this. I have to download this now. <laughs> I, I need to see this. Oh, and, and of course, uh, who plays Tommy Lee is uh, uh, Winter Soldier. I forgot his name. Oh, yeah. But he's so much better looking than Tommy Lee. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's so much better. Downloading it right Lee. now. I got to see these titties. I... Uh, well, anyways, um, uh, who knows? Who knows if that'll that'll appear? Uh, you know? it's, it's on Hulu. It's gonna it better appear. Um, a, a, a Pamela Anderson biop. It, look, we're getting off track. Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. Mm. So Matt Smith complaining, of course he is. Um, but I agree with him. All, all these dragon names are ridiculous. But he really, realistically, only has to remember his dragon, his wife's dragon, and Ray, uh, Vagar. Who? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know how George thinks. I don't know how Ryan Condo is going to fit this in here. I don't know how they're going to do it. If, uh, f- oh, fitting in the Jaharis the second. Yeah, I don't know how uh, that's going to go down. Yeah. I really don't. It, it must be some sort of vision of the future, some vision of Heron Hall, some like or not vision, some vision of Summer Hall for like a moment. You know, some flash. You know, like a brand. You know, like the brand dreams where they're just like, and then you know. The fans slow down and, pick, t- and take pictures of the of each thing in turn. I agree with it's gonna be what, it's gonna be something like that. But that's ridiculous though, because what Dave and Dan did was was cut up all the fat, all the ridiculous like superfluous characters that don't need to be there. Why would Condal Condal like he need like? By the way, everyone who's listening to this right now, yes, you guys are like fans, super fans, what have you. But remember, a majority of the fandom, I would argue three fourths of the fa- of the people watching House of the Dragon are not hardcore fans. They're casuals. They'll watch it mm. and then they'll forget about it tomorrow unless there's like a really cool scene. And they'll forget about it tomorrow or the next day. That's a majority of the fan base or the fan, the people watching. Yeah. What's the point in including Jaharis just so George can go, <laughs> see, he included it. Like, why? Like, just, just for him? I, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know. People are crazy about this stuff. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, meanwhile, they've, they've added the, the incorrect number of legs on, on, on they the they dragon, said they're so. going to explain that. They said they're going to explain this. So okay, I'll hold it to it's, it. It's on his. It's on his freaking crown. So I don't know. So they, well, it's, they said they'll explain it. So uh, I mean, it doesn't bother me as much as apparently it bothers you. It's fine. No, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. I think it's an interesting. I think it's an interesting thing that they've done, and I don't know what they're doing. But okay, I'm ready for the explanation. I'm ready for it. Wow me. You know, it's fine. Oh, by the way, um, you were I'm I'm stupid for not reading this part of the article. Sorry to the audience. My apologies. Um a part of the article here. Martin also asked that House of the Dragon include a lot of symbolic color related to all the major and minor houses of Westeros. He spoke with Condal about the heraldry fans would see and that details importance in the story. Uh mm. Condal says S- symbolic color, because what what else are colors for? <laughs> Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> what else are colors for other than symbolism? Right. Fucking. 
I find, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I quote here from Condal, It's such a time of high uh, decadence and peace and wealth and prosperity for the realm. Everybody will really f- uh, festoon themselves in their house colors and be proud of them as they marched into the tournament. So, yeah, I agree. This is, yeah, yeah. I'm glad we get to see more sigils, which are, to me, super important. Uh, I hope they somehow wear their sigils on them, or they incorporate their house's uh, sigil on their armor. Like, House Tully had, like, the scale armor, and, you know, mm. House Lannister, because of their wealth, they have, like, all the, the, the nice, like, you know, bells and whistles. Yeah. So... I mean, it's 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 weird to like that one of your criticisms is one of the, is one of the best aspects of Game of Thrones. Like costumes were were incredible in Game of Thrones, and, and I admit that they look fucking incredible for House of the Dragon. So wait, my maybe criticism? It was like, no, no, I, George's criticism. Oh yeah, criticism. no, he's out of his mind. I mean, how like the the one thing that you could never really say about that was bad about Game of Thrones was the costumes. Some people might mock like Cersei's later dresses as being too modern, but for the most part, like we fucking loved like their or or like um, uh, some people didn't like um, Euron's costumes near the end. That was but, that you know, he looked like he shot that hot topic. That was ridiculously dumb. Right, but this was all intentional. Like it was all like moving to a more modern time and a more modern look. Like I, I get I get the symbol I get the choice that was being made, mm-hmm. you know? It didn't bother me too much. I mean I made I made my jokes, you know, but but uh overall the entire series of Game of Thrones had incredible fucking costumes. Oh yeah. And I you know I wouldn't. I wouldn't really criticize it too much. It was top notch. And weapons now. And weapons too. And I, weapons. I know you're gonna roll your eyes yes. at this, but if anything, they needed to show off the weapons more because Euron had a crack and axe. Uh, uh, oh Bruce, yeah. Bruce Bolton had uh, his his handle and 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 uh, uh, pommel were actually that, a flayed that, man. That crossbow. That that um that that scorpion thing that he used to kill the dragon mm-hmm. was just a beautiful beautiful piece of uh, of of work some people didn't know um, this but uh Oberyn had a viper on his on his spear which was pretty cool i'm glad they left out the mountains like fist reaching in the air kind of on his helmet that mm-hmm. was that was a little that was dumb but uh everything else pretty cool yeah yeah they i mean so but on the uh, the criticism aside of the house of the dragons like costumes look insanely good, insane. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what what can what can we say? They're they're the costume designers are fucking rocking are rocking it for uh as, as they always have for what like a ten million episode? How much are they doing an episode for millions of dollars an episode? Yeah, it better be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, did you want to talk about the, the? So we finally see the the uh, Rhaenyra's children. Yes, the strong boys. Supposedly, allegedly. Well, I'm not. I, uh, you know. <laughs> allegedly. It's so it's so silly how people like like it's supposed to be ambiguous. Like the people in story think it's ambiguous. Like you know that the, the uh, it's weird that people have such a no no. I'm certain they're the strong boys. Um, in Fire and Blood, there is really nothing, nothing, like. That that shows that that strong and Rhaenyra would have any romantic interest in each other. Um, strong is supposedly once you sort of put like that. Strong is supposed to be a parallel to the mountain. It also kind of takes it away. Like, oh, who would think about the mountain sexually? Like, there's nothing. Why would anyone want to sleep with the mountain? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. Um, and so you kind of have Harwin Strong, the largest and strongest person in Westeros. Like, would Rhaenyra be like, oh, yeah, great. What a great guy. You know, like, is he physically hot? You know, this is different than Kristen Cole, where you're like, that. you know, he's described as being super handsome. So, like, why would she jeopardize her her marriage by, with, with, str- with, you know, Strong when she could jeopardize it with anybody else? You know, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm sorry, the, not the strong boys, the coal boys. It's the the coal boys or the the, the Valarian boys. I mean, they could be uh, Lanos. I, don't I mean, I, let's be honest, they could be Lanos. Uh, they could be mushrooms. We don't fucking. I, they could be mushrooms. God, that'd they be could great. Be, it could be mushrooms, but um, they're most likely. Well, also, the, Harwin Strong had a broken collarbone when 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 Jace was was. Oh, uh, that's I forgot about your like pseudo fight with the audience about fucking 
while someone has a broken... Yeah. Remember that? Like, people, like, press it. I had a... Apparently, everyone in the audience who commented had a broken collarbone, and they fucked before. Right. So. Yeah, and like two people, two people can have a child with co- with a hair color that's not like either the mother or the father. So when you like weigh these two things, when I have in one hand, like a dude with a broken collarbone, and a, and a woman jeopardizing her entire like career and you know life um, to sleep with a kid, you know, to sleep with a guard with with a, with a broken collarbone. You know, and and I'm weighing that with the likelihood that somebody just had a kid with hair color that was different from his parents. Like, the latter is much more common. Like, that happens all the fucking time. Yeah. I mean, granted, people have affairs all the fucking time. But, like, like with people with broken collarbones, when, like, everybody's watching and it's really, really freaking important and you've been spending decades, like, like working your way to, to the throne and making sure that, you know, every aspect of your plan, like... Is, is is happening i don't know like it's supposed to be ambiguous it's like you're supposed to have no opinion you're supposed to have the opinion of could be anybody could be fucking anybody fine preston fine the strong cole yeah. lanor boys <laughs> the, the strong <laughs> the mushroom boys it, the strong, just keep just keep adding on you know or uh carl i think fire and blood actually says that she has that she had well mushroom claims she had sex with carl cory or carl yeah carl cory right i don't remember He's, poor rainera is like just my god he has a really similar name to a, a character who appears earlier in fire and blood i think there's a carl corbray earlier on is, but this isn't is carl, carl corbray the one from uh that little that challenges little finger no i want to say that carl corbray happens like like during the reign of Jaharis or something. Let me look it up. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. I swear, Carl Corbray is uh, the guy. Uh, am I thinking of the one? Oh, no, I'm stupid. You are correct. Carl Corbray. Who, who, which Corbray am I thinking of? Um, is it Lynn Corbray? Am I, is that the one? Well, Lynn Corbray pulls out his sword and like That's the one. and threatens Littlefinger. That's but the guy. He's secretly he's secretly working for Littlefinger. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, no, you're correct. Carl Corbray is the one from the uh, Gold Cloaks. Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, though they weren't gold back then. <laughs> this guy, Commander of the City was. Yeah, fucking guy. They were, yeah, they weren't. They weren't the gold cloaks yet. But yes, they were. He was from the. He was the uh, commander of the City Watch. Uh, what up? Besides, uh, did you? Did you see anything else in the TV spot that we hadn't seen yet? Uh, there's besides seeing the the Rhaenyra's children, you get to see Rhaenyra riding her dragon, um, young? Cyrax, young and, or old? Yes, young Rhaenyra, okay. and it 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 seems to be a uh, young Rhaenyra who's coming. So you know, at during the egg incident where where Damon is leaving, and then a dragon flies by, mm-hmm. and and um, Otto Hightower flinches. Uh, it's that seems to be Rhaenyra. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rhaenyra showing up. It's you know um, at that point. So I don't know why she would show up and why, um, unless she's maybe she's showing up on behalf of her father. Because um, I'm about to say like, Otto Hightower shows up, and uh, wouldn't wouldn't Damon just have his dragon kill everybody? Well, I suppose if Rhaenyra showed up with. With, so I mean, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra should be fighting against Damon at this point in the story, but we'll see what they do. We shall see what they do. We shall see what they do. Uh, Preston, would you do you mind if we wrap it up here? Sounds good, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we will see you all next time. Have a good one. <laughs>